Hey there, it's Matt here, and if you've ever wanted to make your models move, I'm here to show you how to use an extension for SketchUp to make this sliding door animation just like this. Uh, so the extension is Fredo 6 Animator, uh, and I'll give you a little context of the model first. Uh, this model was created uh, for some of our in-product graphics a couple years back. Um, not for a particular client, but what this video presupposes is, what if it was? So suppose I have this beautiful lake house, nice view, um, and then in the mornings, you know, this, I want to, sell my client on this door that opens up and shows you this beautiful view of the lake. We're going to use Animator for that, so let's jump in and I'll show you how. So once you download Animator from the Sketchication plugin store and install it, you'll go to Tools, Fredo 6 Collection, Animator, and Clip Editor. That's the main uh, UI that we'll be seeing and using today. Um, Animator is a very robust extension. There's a lot going on in here, a lot we could do. If there's anything you would like to see animated, uh, leave us a comment down below for sure. Um, and I'm just brushing the surface, but uh, I'll walk you through what we're doing here. So we have the timeline that's by default on the left side here. You can click this to put it uh, horizontally if that's more comfortable for you, if you're used to nonlinear editing or something like that. I'll leave it on the side for this one. Um, up in the top left, we have kind of the settings, and then this is uh, sort of the play area of the UI here. And then uh, we have our uh, motion part of the uh, of the UI. I want to move these doors, so I'm going to insert a new unit movement. That's this blue block here and select new movement. Uh, now it'll pre-select groups. You can either select groups that are nested and it'll come up with the nesting uh, levels here. I've just broken these groups out separately to just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and I'll choose this door to move first. Uh, so I want to uh, have a translation type movement. There are other types here, but uh, we'll just be talking about translation and the sliding portion of the motion here. Translation is what we want. And we want to move this along the track on the bottom. Um, when I uh, have this group selected, you can see that the local axes, the red direction is the direction I want to move along. So just to make it a little bit easier, I'll confine it to that um, to that movement axis. And then select here. And let's see, just orbit so I can get a better view. You can still use the regular SketchUp inferencing with this. So I'll inference just to this point. So now when I go back and play this, I can see that door goes from here to here to start that opening. Okay, great. I will say back up and then now you can see that clip was added to our timeline over here. Two seconds is the default and so that's how long it is now. Uh, what's nice about these movements is that they are essentially set up like SketchUp components are where we just created the definition of the component and then this clip here is the instance of that component, meaning if I want to have this door, see only went half as far as we want to go, but if I'm at two seconds here, I can add another instance of that of that movement and it'll move the same object the same distance. So now that door is all the way open. That's cool. And then we also need this door to move that same distance as well. So uh, I will add a new movement, select that item, again, that local transformation, although that axis looks a little weird, doesn't it? Let's do it manually and then move it to here. So that is two seconds and it moves along with that other door. So now when I go to the start and look from here, I can see that right door moves as I wanted it to. Just to clean this timeline up, I'll select all these uh, clips with the option modifier and then group them and say that's going to be called move R, the right doors. 
Alrighty, cool. Now I can repeat that process for the left doors. So I'm going to add a new movement, this door. And from here to there. Um, what you can also do instead of just saving that and going back is you can save and create another sequence with the same selection. And that's what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to add that same movement again. Uh, right, Let's see if we can inference the exact point we want to go to here. And save it. Okay, now there's another way you can do this as well, which I'll show here. I'll add that exact same movement that I just did. But then when I go into edit it, I can choose this, uh, create a copy of the current sequence. I'll call this move L2. Deselect, and then I'm going to select that second door that I want. And it has that same movement remembered. So now that's moving at the same rate as the other door. Go back, if I play that from the beginning, that's the motion I want. Great. I'll group these clips. Move L. And what's nice additionally about this extension is that these clips are parametric, meaning, um, you know, suppose from the manufacturer, these doors don't actually take four seconds to open. That's a little too quick. They actually take six seconds. Now, I could go into these clips individually and, you know, change this to three seconds long. For each one, that's way too much work. We don't want to do that. So how Fredo 6 has it set up is that you can, just like you scale the outside of a component, you can scale the timing on a particular clip or group, which unaffects the original contents of that clip. So um, I can either change it in here, right? I change the duration under this setting here, or I can just drag this box to change the duration. So now when I go, I'm already at the beginning, I can play it again. That's a little more, a little more like it, a little more representative of what's actually going to happen. Um, and like I said, you can change a lot of things on the outside of this component. So I could change uh, the timing to not be uh, linear. So it'll uh, have an ease motion that adds a little more realism as well. Starts off quick, but then slows down once it gets right in place and gives me that lovely view of the lake. Um, there's a lot of other stuff we could add. Let's suppose we want to add a camera move of, I'm just waking up, you know, this is set on an automatic timer and I can hear the birds chirping and it's waking me up. So uh, I can insert the current view and this kind of works like uh, scene transitions do in SketchUp where if I add a view here, it will interpolate between those two views. And now I'm waking up and that is just representative of the experience that I'm going for. I understand that's pretty rudimentary. Um, there is so much more you can do with this extension, but I just want to kind of get our feet wet, dip our toes in this lake house here. Um, if you have any other things, like I mentioned earlier, that you'd like to see uh, animated, let us know for sure. If you like that video, please hit the thumbs up button, the like button down below. And um, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.